Today, I'm taking you inside my smart home to show how I set up a powerful, budget-friendly Zigbee network that all works within Apple HomeKit. I'll also reveal how I optimize it across multiple floors, avoided Wi-Fi interferences, and made it all work seamlessly. So let's dive right in. Hello and welcome to my channel and it's part of my smart home journey. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I set up a strong and reliable multi-floor Zigbee network throughout the house using white label devices all purchased from aliexpress i'll also share how much i spend on this setup and the websites i use to select my devices now the good news is that all of these devices work together and seamless in apple HomeKit. but first let's start with a quick zigbee 101 now zigbee is a wireless protocol designed for smart home devices and i it works on the same 2.4 GHz frequency as Wi-Fi, but it's optimized to connect with devices reliably and efficiently. Well, imagine you and your friends are playing a game where you pass a message around, just like your Chinese whispers or game of telephone. So you whisper it to the friend next to you, then they pass it on to the next friend and so on until it reaches the last person. That's kind of how a Zigbee network works. It's basically creates its own mesh network. So within the same mesh network, each smart device like a switch, light or sensor is like a friend in the game. They help pass messages to each other to make sure they get to the right devices. So if you turn off the light in another room, the message travels through other devices to reach the light and to turn it off. This way, all the devices work together like a team to make sure the message gets where it needs to be and makes it happen in the speed of light. Basically, Zigbee is a powerful choice for smart homes as it is self-managed, does not create bottlenecks on your Wi-Fi network, there's no need to assign network IP addresses, it helps connect everything from lights to sensors and thermostats in a secure, low power network that scales well with more devices. Now, with those benefits in mind, here's how I set up my Zigbee Smart Home Hub. I primarily used a Raspberry Pi, a Conbi 2 stick, a 32 GB class 10 micro SD card, a USB cable extension, and an open source system called Zigbee 2 MQTT. Now I assembled all of these components to create a dedicated server for my Zigbee devices as I had already anticipated significant reliance on it. Now don't worry, I've created numerous tutorial videos on how to set up Zigbee 2 MQTT as always, I've included the links in the description. Now, the Zigbee 2 MQTT software offers numerous advantages, including the ability to control everything from a single web page with complete local control, eliminate the need for cloud dependency. Now, it provides faster responses, enhanced security, gets regular updates, and seamless integration with Home Assistant as well as HomeBridge. Now, when it comes to finding affordable Zigbee devices, I basically rely on two main websites and have also left links in the description. Now, website number one is my go-to compatibility resource. It lists Zigbee devices supported by various open source platforms with filters on the left to sort by device type or platform. And on the top right hand corner, you'll even see the total number of devices supported and it's updated on a regular basis. Website two is the official Zigbee to MQTT repository here you can filter either by vendor or by feature. And all of the devices listed here are specifically compatible with Zigbee 2 MQTT. Don't worry, if you don't see your device, there's also a guide to help you add support for it. Now using these websites and AliExpress, I purchased the switches, the involved modules, lights, blinds, extenders, buttons, scene panels and also sensors and again all of these purchases were done based on our smart home blueprint now to make sure all of the devices work seamlessly on my multi-floor layout i had to plan the network carefully with zigbee everything starts with a coordinator which in my case is the conby 2 stick now this device creates and forms the zigbee network communicates with all the zigbee devices and is installed in the network rack which is connected to the Raspberry Pi running Zigbee 2 MQTT. Next up, I needed devices to act as repeaters or router devices, meaning 
they help extend the network's reach by relaying the signals. So I placed more routers like smart switches, smart lights and blinds strategically on each floor. They are power devices, they stay connected, helping strengthen my network signal. Others are end devices or even called as child devices, which only receive messages. They are basically your battery powered devices like this button and scene panel. They don't act as repeaters because basically they are conserving power. So I placed few of these around the house. But an unexpected challenge I had was discovering that not all of the white label powered devices actually were routers. Some were also end devices, which means they don't strengthen the network even though I purchased it from the same vendor. So a tip here is if you're building a multi-floor Zigbee network, definitely check if your power devices are actually routers before installing them. Now for the outdoor spaces, I installed three Zigbee lights to extend the network into the open air. So if required, I could technically install an outdoor battery operated sensor. Now for hard to reach spots like my maintenance room, I used a USB Zigbee extender that's connected to the nearest Zigbee device. And for my home entrance, which is a floor below, I use inline Zigbee modules connected to a dump switch, which are all routers and are all connected either to the Zigbee extender or to the nearest Zigbee router device. So this complete setup gave me a stable Zigbee network across four floors with 33 devices in total, 22 acting as routers and 11 as child devices. Now to get stability, another big step was setting up my Zigbee network channel to avoid interference. And this needed to be done prior to pairing any device to the Zigbee network. Now this is because Zigbee and Wi-Fi both use the same 2.4 gigahertz band. So they can easily overlap causing drops in connection or slower responses. To prevent this, I picked a Zigbee channel that didn't overlap with my Wi-Fi. So currently my Wi-Fi 2.4 gigahertz operates on channel one, six and 11. And on my Zigbee network, I use channel 25, which was further away from the Wi-Fi network. So if you are doing this by yourself, I recommend using tools or apps that analyze your home Wi-Fi channel layout. Since I was using the Unify network, it displayed the data and also allows me to tweak the channels as well. The bottom line is, choosing a clear Zigbee channel can really make a difference in performance. And as I mentioned earlier, to manage my devices, I use Zigbee to MQTT, which is an open source software running directly on my Raspberry Pi. With this setup, I can view all of my devices, monitor battery levels all in one place, completely locally. And the devices are all exposed through the official Homebridge Zigbee to MQTT plugin, which responds in Apple HomeKit, flawlessly. What's even better is that this setup gives me complete control to make my home just the way I want it without relying on proprietary cloud services. Now to get more out of Zigbee to MQTT, do watch this video that provides 10 easy Zigbee to MQTT tips that will make you an expert. So the big question, how much did all of this cost? Well, I bought and installed all of this Zigbee devices myself, spending around $1,100 which is less than 1% of the total cost of my home. For the size of this house and the benefits of a low power, scalable network, it's definitely worth it. This setup shows you, you can build a smart home on a budget, including with automated blinds. So last but not the least, setting up a Zigbee network in a multi-floor home environment came with a few learning points. One. What I learned is that the key to a great and healthy Zigbee network mesh is to add and have many Zigbee router devices relatively close to each other and always powered on. In order for the Zigbee network as a whole to get good coverage and range, as well as improving the overall robustness and resilience in the network to handle the loss of some Zigbee routers in case of failures. To select a non-overlapping channel, avoiding interference is crucial. Three, make sure to use a USB cable extension as well as connect it to a USB 2.0 port and not a 3.0 port. 
to avoid any electromagnetic interference. If you keep these points in mind, your ZigBee network setup without a doubt will be stronger, smoother and faster in Apple HomeKit. So I hope this walkthrough helps you plan and build your own ZigBee based smart home as well as keeping you within budget. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more updates on my smart home journey and other exciting DIY smart home projects. Until the next time, my friends, cheers and happy automation.